Okay, I'm back. Um, now that the frets have been pushed in, they're glued in, I double check. I double checked if they were all seated correctly. I actually put this on without the, the sandpaper on here. Glued, I'm sorry, pressed overnight and then I glued the sides just as a precaution for them not to pop up because I had a little problem with some of them staying down so I had to do that. So now, now I want to level the frets. Now we're kind of towards the end. So in order for, for me to do that correctly, I have to make sure that the frets are, I'm sorry, the, the neck is completely straight. So I have to use this not straight edge and I look past it, underneath it, I got to look down and uh, I'm looking for any gaps between this, the not straight edge and the fret board. I know the fret board's straight, so I'm counting on that. So right now I don't see any gaps across anywhere. None. So that's gonna assure me that when it's leveled and I have some relief, that it's true. Everything's gonna work the way it's supposed to. So um and this is the only way you could do that correctly. So the fretboard is straight. You sanded it with a straight neck. You sanded the fretboard. No, that's straight and true. Now you press the frets in and you make sure that all of them are pressed in as best as you can. And now you level them. So now that's where we're at right now. Right here, I have that, that uh, fretboard, um, the, the leveler for the frets made out of, uh, I believe it's aluminum. This is 320. I have a few high frets here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking some down to the frets down to the point where I start to get close towards the end to where they're all straight. Then I'm going to take the 320 off and use 400 so I can start working the frets a little bit uh, slower with finer paper so I want to have these big gouges where I still have to work. So I'm going to do that, okay? So um, one big... Uh, one big um, advice that I could give you is that because this, this um, I hope you could see this, the, the level here, this, the, this thing for the frets, to level the frets, it's, it's almost the width of the neck. So if you see that, it's not that, um, it's not that big, right? So it almost fits right on the neck. So I've seen some guys use that, use the, these other leveling devices, especially small ones and big ones, where they start right here and they go like this all the way across. And obviously you would remove your tuners if you know you were doing it that way. But if you do it this way, that means that all these frets here, they're getting sandpaper, they're getting hit by sandpaper like this. Right, and it's being leveled. Right, so are the other ones. But when they come to here to the top, they stop. So this fret here, these frets just get a little bit. So these are going to be more leveled than these. So I don't understand how they do that, uh, and it doesn't make any sense. And in my opinion, that's not done. That, you can't do it that way. So the way you use this thing here, or now let's say you want to use this, it's the same thing. Look at that. I think it's warp look at that so don't use any wooden products you know after I knew this was was no good I put some varnish on it I'm gonna cut it and kinda use them as clamps or this other piece if it's kinda straight as best as possible I'll put some sandpaper and it'll help me shape the the nut so it could still be used but you shouldn't have these problems with this stuff here but don't use wooden stuff to level the frets okay so now this thing here it's true. I have 320. So what I do is I keep it like I, I don't go past. I go up to here, like maybe an inch past the fretboard, and an inch past that fret, this side here at the end. I hope you could see that. So what I do is I just go like this with one hand. I hold the neck, and I just go like this, just right here, see nearby. I don't go too far. I don't venture too much. 
Okay, it's 320, so I'm going to stop right now because I want to look. So, just with the, with the chopstick here, this fret got hit all the way across. This fret got hit on the sides. This fret got hit here, here. This fret never got hit just a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there. A lot right here, here. This fret never got touched, but a little piece right there. This fret got hit here. This fret got hit a lot right here, here, here. All these frets got hit pretty pretty good, especially these down here. This one didn't here. So, so that's where we're at. So let's uh let's continue. I'm gonna do a little bit more. See, now I know how much I have to go. I, I can go how much, as far as time-wise, how much to do. I'm not adding any pressure. I'm just letting the weight of the tool do the work and the sandpaper. These are, from here this way, they're pretty much leveled. This hasn't been touched. This hasn't been touched. This one here, I need to take it down here in the center. This hasn't been touched. All right, so I'm going to continue. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to continue to watch this. This is pretty much boring. So I'm going to just kind of do this. Let the fretboard, uh, the weight of the tool do the work. Okay. So now you're, I'm not sure if you can see that, but now you're starting to see the fretboard get a little dirty. This fret is completely level, and I just, I can't stop and not hit this one. I still have to hit all of them, and we're getting, this is getting closer. I have not touched this fret yet. That's, I don't like that. So, we're going to continue until we get close. All of these frets are level. All of these are very tippy, the very top right there uh, less than 1 16th is already these all of these are level right here all of these with the exception of just a little bit here but you can see the top got hit I need it here this hasn't been touched this is getting closer this needs a lot of help so I'm going to continue by the fretboard, not venture off too much like I did a little bit. Okay. Level, level, not level, level, not level. I need some here, here. Level, level, not, hasn't been touched. All of these are level. So this one's giving me a hard time. Okay. Uh, a little bit more. I like to turn this around because just to change the direction of the sandpaper. I'm not sure if it really helps, but to keep everything uh, even, if you will. Up here, 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 all of this, and every, all of that, it's already done. So I'm kind of uh, kind of surprised that this fret here is pushed down, or I need to work at it that much. So what I'm going to attempt to do right now 
is check how much how much work does it need because uh, it should it should have been done by now with the exception of this here this this might require a lot so let me um, I had another tool here that I can't find now there it is so what I'm gonna do to help me figure out what's going on I'm gonna set this right here and see this is a uh, the same really thin feeler, feeler gauge oh, it's backwards sorry I had it right the first time right there hope you can see that now I'm gonna check in here and it does not it just it's really tight so this is how much more I have to sand if that makes sense this is how much more I have to sand. Is that in there? Oh, it is. And that's the thickness. So I'm almost there. It's, it's not a lot really, so that's cool. Okay, all these again, these are level, 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 almost there. I still have like an inch here, half an inch, quarter of an inch, a whole inch, inch and a half here, I guess, that much. All right, so I'm getting warmer. I'm going to do this like one more time and change sandpaper. I didn't do that much so as soon as I start hitting the big ones slightly I'm gonna change sandpaper so I'm gonna still continue with this 320 because obviously it's a little bit more aggressive than that other stuff and, and mind you some guys use this is 320 some guys use 220 and that's, that's super aggressive uh, you could use it but change to 320 right away like after you start seeing some some of the stuff getting taken, the frets getting taken down. And I'm taking a little bit longer, obviously, because it's 320. If I would have started with 400, it would have took a lot longer. So I'm just being precautious right now. So that's where we're at. Okay, it's getting warmer right here. I'm almost done. Uh, I still have some here, here. I still need some work here. So... A little bit more. This is a little bit more. I'm just going to flip it over. Okay, so that's level, 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 level. So the ones that need help, this one, this one, this one, and that one. 
So I'm going to go to the 400. I'm going to go to the 400 grit. That way we could save as much as fritz that we want so it could last a little longer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this. I hope it comes out on, on this video. So let me see if I get this wooden back here so I can show what's going on. I hope you can see that. So the camera could focus. All right. All right, guys, sorry. I should have, hey, I screwed up. I'm out of step ahead right now. So let me, uh, let me pause this. I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. So, here it is. We're going to remove this. And this is still good, by the way. I should have cleaned it before I did that. But this is still good. And what I do is I just, I, uh, I wipe it down. Well, I don't wipe it down. I use a, a brush, a brush, and I take all that residue off before I fold it onto itself so I could reuse it because it's still good. Remember, you're not adding pressure. You're just hovering over the top of the frets. So, you know, just pretty basic. Just turn it around on itself. And that's why I dust it off so it could stick to itself again. And I put it in a plastic bag so that the grooves not gonna, it's not gonna dry. The blue, the blue sandpaper that I have is 400. So this 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 will help. This will still work like for at least three more frets. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this 400. Yeah. Okay. So now that's on there. I'll give you one second, guys. Okay, I'm back. My daughter got scared, sorry. So I have the sandpaper on here. It's 400. Now I'm gonna continue. So this is gonna help me work on the frets that are already leveled, take them down just a little bit to make them smooth, right? Because I'm not gonna start at 320 when I polish these. I'm gonna start at 400, because that's where I left off. So I'll probably go like 400 just a little bit, then jump up to 600, 800, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and then polish them up. Okay. A little bit more here. A little bit more. This much. I'm almost there. I'm glad I, I, I changed to this sandpaper uh, when I did because... I don't like I don't like to be there. Then use 400. Then I gotta take off. I gotta take off a lot more to get them smoother. So I try to take take off as little as possible. So we're almost there. You know that tool that I'm using right now. I paid 80 80 bucks for this tool from the Ronald McDonald place um, and the ship I ordered the nine and a half and the twelve so it was eighty dollars each and they made a mistake they sent two orders the one I paid for and a free order at least that's what my daughter said it was a free order uh, but you know uh, it doesn't belong to me so I called them and I told them that they made a mistake and I don't like the way they handled it because they almost seem like I, I, I tricked them or lied to them or stole from them. And I just called them and said, hey, you guys did a double order. And they didn't even thank me. I, I, I almost re I regretted sending it back to them. I could have given it to somebody. And they didn't even thank me. You know, and I was like, wow. You know.
And now, this one alone costs $154. I mean, what a ripoff. This thing only costs like 20 bucks to make, and that's expensive. This thing, for somebody with the right tool, this thing will cost $5 to make, and sell it at 30 bucks. That's perfect, that's good profit there, but these people want $154 for a piece of aluminum. Now, if you, ever, if you guys like, like watching these type of videos, there's a guy, he's pretty funny, he's a knowledgeable too, at first I didn't think so, but he is, a guy named Dave, Dave's uh, Fun Stuff, something like that, Dave Place of Fun Stuff, he has an awesome logo, it's really good looking, and uh, he's a funny guy, I, he does know what he's doing, he has a lot, a lot of knowledge, a lot of numbers in his head. The only thing I don't like is when he uses this thing to level the fret. That's, you know. And uh, he's really good. He's really good at what he does. He gets a lot of customers too. I, I don't do this for a living. I just do this for my guitars. You know, and I spend all this stuff that a luthier has. And it's just it's a hobby to see if I could do it, and I can. And I still gotta work some more. It's pretty low. Let me check one more time. I need to check where I'm at here. This bad boy. And again, it, it won't go in unless I'm doing something wrong. Oh, there you go. Uh, little bite. Right here. You know what? Let me use it. Um, use it like this. Hold on. Let me use it like this. The right. Yeah, a little, little bite. So I have some more. It doesn't matter. Am I taking down a lot? Uh, uh, not a lot. Maybe. Might be a lot. You know, it's going to take longer because I have finer paper. So, if you guys want to continue to watch this, I could turn it off or I could come back when I'm done. So, I'm going to turn it off. I'm almost done, by the way. So, just let me turn it off and we'll come back and continue from there. Okay. I'm done. So, now the frets are all, all of them are leveled. The last one that was giving me a hard time is right here. This is the last one. Let me double check. Let me see how where I'm at with that one. No rocking. Oops, sorry. This is the wrong. Here we go. No rocking. None. This this is the one that was low. So. Let me go one this way or that way so, so I can see if it rocks. No rocking. Okay, I'm level. I'm level with these frets. Right now, I gotta crown them. And you can actually unlevel your frets when you crown them. I've seen it. <laughs> Where am I at here? Okay. So I'm I'm good. I'm good. These are these are all all of these are level. Now I gotta crown them. That's the hard part. Because you don't want to take too, you don't want to take anything from the top. You want to take them off from the side. So I'm just gonna give you a little close up view, see if that works. Move the camera a little bit. So 
But anyways, that's where I'm at. The whole thing is leveled. Uh, you know what I did off camera? Uh, not today, but earlier. If you remember, this this neck was the the wood on the fretboard was really really dry. So what I did is I had a cloth that had that had a um, lemon oil from a previous setup I did for a friend of mine for his kid. And it was still moist, so I didn't add any drops on here. I had that rag, and I just kind of rubbed it in as best as I could. And the reason why I did that before I leveled the frets, because moisture or, or something like lemon oil is going to make the wood moist, if you will, and the frets might pop up, right? Or, or the glue might debond from the fret from the fretboard and the fret. So I did that as a precaution to see if I'm going to get any problems. I want the problems to happen now, not later, until the thing is set up. So if I, it happens now, I could fix it. So as a, as a right now, this fretboard is leveled. And what I'm going to do, now I'm going to crown them. And when I crown them, that's when I cover the fretboard up. Because it gets really dirty. I don't want to scratch anything. And that's what I'm going to do. So what I use to crown, and again, for at this point when I crown them, I still keep the fretboard straight. Here's a crowning file that I have. That I, I This came in a kit that I bought from uh, Ronald McDonald. Um, Wow, like 15 years ago, I think. And it's nice. It's a nice tool. You know, it's it's grounded here where it's nice and smooth. And here you have some... Can you see this? Sorry. Uh, so this is, this is a nice file. All right. Then here's a file that the same thing. It's grounded here and here. This is how it came. And it's normally used to work on chainsaws. Like if you're in the, you know, like in brush area you're cutting down bushes and stuff and your saw gets a little dull you know you could use this to sharpen those carbide tips and some of them have like a little it's bent here so you grab it a certain way I think kinda like that it bends up so you could grab it and but this is great I right cheap too this came from a really cheap kit that like three dollars for a bunch of files and I ground it here but I didn't do a good job so I won't use it right so now that the fretboard is leveled, I have to crown them. And then I'm going to put some more highlight, uh, a sharpie marker here, red. I like using red because if I use like darker colors, like red or blue, I'm sorry, blue or black, because the fretboard is dark, it, in my eyes, it just blends in. Um, so, um, I'm not sure if I have to show you guys that, but I'm going to pause it and look at the video, see how I did as far as explaining this stuff. Then when I come back, I might explain something that I said incorrectly about doing this. And then I'll crown the frets. Then when I crown the frets, I'm going to do the side. And I just do a little bit, enough to remove that little, that little nick that grabs right there. Some guys do it right after they install the frets. I don't. I mean, you could to save your sandpaper, but uh, it's okay. It wasn't that bad. So, I'll come back. Here we go. Okay, guys, I'm back. I crowned all the frets using this file right here, large and medium. I only use the large section. Um, I didn't want to go over that. I didn't show it on video because it's pretty simple. Although, I am going to add a small clip when I'm working up here. Uh, playing music, uh, listening to music actually. So what I did is when I was done crowning all the tools, I'm sorry, the, the frets, I left a little, like, 1 16th little mark on the top uh, of red because I used a red Sharpie to mark my frets. And as you can see, I kind of hit the side. That's why I tape it. But I left a 1 16th edge right there. So then what I did is because the last um, sandpaper that I used was a, I believe I said it was 300. 
I used 300 one more time paper and I did the sides I didn't do the top I did the sides right when I was done I flipped it over and then I did it again then I grabbed the 300 uh, no I think I grabbed 600 and I just went like that just very light I didn't add no pressure just a little bit right and then I moved up to, I believe it was, uh, I'm sorry, I did 600. This was the 600 right here that I used on the frets. Then I think I went to 1,000 or, or 800. I can't remember right now. But I went up, obviously. You want to go up. So now, after I did that, I used this polishing cloth that I have here to polish aluminum and frets, stuff like that. It's, um, it's soft. It's easy to work with. And uh, I polished the frets using this so I could see any of the gouging that I did with this tool. So I noticed there was a very slight here and there. So then I, what I have now is 1500. Where's that other piece I could? That's not it. Anyways, it's right here. 1500. Now, now we're using 1500. Right to get rid of those marks that popped up when I polished using this. Okay, so now I could see where all my marks are at because before you couldn't tell. So I, I mean, I wish I could show you guys how the frets turned out on the top just by polishing it with that tool. Yeah, you can see it. So there's little sections right there where you could still see what the what the tool did to get them crowned. All right, and these are the EVO frets. So there's sections here that I have to, uh, that need a little bit of attention. That's why I went to 15. So I go to 15, and then I polish them up one more time to see any more, you know, gouging. I'm calling it gouging, but it's just, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just, you know, a little bit of rough marks from the, from the crown to, crowning tool. So I do that because I get better visual. I can see where I'm at. You know what I mean? With as far as how much more I have to do. So after I do 1500, polish, and then 2000. And I'll just stop at 2000 and then polish it up one more time. Then I'll polish it up with the chemical. I, I, I like to use mothers. I'll use mothers. I'll put some on it, let it sit, and start polishing. Um, I don't advise using a Dremel tool because they get hot and they pop up uh, you could use something like this on your uh, you know on your uh, drill and you want to just touch them just touch them and do it this way and then come back and check if they're getting warm not hot if hot you have to stop warm so you're getting warm just back off a little bit but you don't want them to get hot so as of right now I think they look really good but you know, you want to do it right the first time. You don't want to go back and go, oh, I should have polished them some more. Just do it. Spend some time with these things. I mean, it's your guitar. So, like I mentioned, I'm going to go back and start doing 1500. Polish them up with this tool. It, it does it really quick, by the way. Then I'll do uh, 2000. Uh, you know, until um, I feel comfortable. Then I'll polish it up at my mother's wax i mean wax uh, metal polish that i have there um what else can i talk about uh I, you know what i didn't show you guys when i when i bet with the frets i'm sorry when i did the did the, the sides here i didn't show you guys that so i apologize but it, it's simple you know the best thing to do using one of these is to guide it guide it with your thumb Cut out your thumb or your finger. Use your finger so it won't jump up. And like I said, it's grounded here. This is a round side. So you could use the round side. But if, you need, if you need to get to right into that corner, you need to flip it around. Because this part is flat. This is round. So if you go like this one time, one more time that way, and then however you want to use it, it it's so simple. It's too easy to use. And then you, with your finger, you just kind of guide it, you know. But you don't want to create a bevel on this little corner. You just want to knock out that little corner and that's it then as you're doing the frets kind of hit it there a little bit and it'll turn out really nice you know I don't like 45 degree 
bevels because it just comes too, too inside too much. I like 30. The thing I use is meant for 30, but because it never lays, the file that I use is for 30, 30 degrees. But only if it's flat. Hope you can see this. Only if it's flat. It's not. It's round. So when I go like this to it, it it's not 30 anymore. It becomes like 20 or, or 80 degrees. So it's straighter. So if you notice on Warmoth Next, they say they have, they claim 30 degrees, but it's really more like 80 if you're counting this as 90, right? But if it's zero, then 20. Cause they're pretty much straight up, if you will. But I like it that way. I don't like that 45 degree thing and anything like that. It'll be more, oh, the 30 degree will hold true for a flatter neck like a, a Gibson, which is 12, right? Then you'll get more of a 30 degree as opposed to leaning it in like that, like I do when I do this. It'll be a little bit flatter. So you will get the closer to 30 degrees. Now, if it's 16, then obviously it's flatter and you get the true 30 degrees on that. So, anyways, I apologize for not showing that. Uh, like I said, it's just too easy. To do that, uh, the crowning part, I think I recorded just a little bit right here. No big deal, right? And now, again, 1500, polish it, and then add the, the metal polish. And when I'm done, I'm going to check if any of this level, if any of these frets rock, because I don't want them to rock when I'm done. So pretty much I'm done right here they don't rock right because if they did that means I don't know how to use sandpaper they don't rock you know what I mean so I think that the problem I had with this neck is gone and it took for me to take it apart right I had to take it apart remove the frets sand it sand it to the point where I felt the neck, the fretboard was straight enough and it is right it was so awesome so now I get to sorry I'm not level here okay so now I get to use this guitar like I wanted to like it was meant to be used right I think with Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff here Awesome, I love it. So now, like I said, polish it. Then um, I'm not going to show the polish. You know, again, that's boring. That's you guys know how to do that. So when I'm done, I'll show it to you guys when I'm complete how it looks. Then I'm going to make a second video on how to set it up for my uh, Strat that I put together. Um, you know, tribute to Stevie Ray Vaughan. So with EVO frets. All right, guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If you disagree with anything, let me know. I'm not saying I know everything. I don't do this for a living. But when I do something, I try to study up on it before I uh, you know, jump in and start doing it. I try to get all the right tools. Um, I talk to people. I watch, I watch videos on YouTube. And then I make my own judgment on it. And whatever mechanical aptitude that I understand, that I know, that makes sense. And that way I know what to do or what not to do. So and the same thing applies to you. If something that you wouldn't do that I did, well, don't do it. All right, guys, stay tuned. Okay. I think I'm done now. It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm done with the neck. And... This is what it looks like. I polished it up already. I don't want to show that part because that's... I don't think I have to show anybody how to do that. So, uh, it's too simple. But here it is. These are EVO frets, 6100s. The width is 0 0.100 thousandths of an inch. And the height is 0 0.057 thousandths of an inch. I, I just dropped that there. So... So, so far so good I gotta clean the fretboard just a little bit without messing with the frets as far as get, removing the polish or the shine if you will so 
There you go. So this is the way I, I would do it. What I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to get the nut ready, a brass nut, and radius the bottom because the bottom is at 9.5. So that's more work there that I'm going to take care of. And once I do that, then I'm going to string it up and get the correct height of the nut. And then I'll, then I'll start going over setting it up. So there it is. Well, I hope this help. Hope this video helps someone. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, leave some comments. Um, Leave some comments, ask any questions if you have any. Uh, it's, a, it's a little late right now, so I'm a little tired. And cheers.